Welcome back to another School of Calisthenics Q&A with Tim and Jacko. The playground session. The playground session. I forget that we've retitled it. <laughs> it's it's right. not on brand anymore, which is... I'm not on brand nors, aren't I? <laughs> You're so, disappointed with yourself, aren't you? Yeah, like, I, that. I'm going to go home and chastise myself <laughs> over my lack of brand awareness later. And today we are looking at handstand help. Yes, we are. A few handstand questions flooding in. I mean, it's funny, seeing as it's all building towards a handstand world record, 23rd of June in Nottingham, world record attempt for the most number of people doing a handstand at one time, current record 399. We are looking to blow that out of the park. Considerably. Considerably. But it's going to be a whole day event. It's not just a 15 second handstand, then you go mm -hmm. home. We're going to try and put some of the stuff on as well. So it should be a good day. Yeah. We've we'll got a capacity for 10,000 people, I've been told, yeah, at we, the venue. I'm expecting that to sell out. <laughs> but if you haven't signed up, you can find out. We'll put the link um, in the notes. You can go to the website on um, schoolofcalisthenics.com forward, forward slash handstand challenge. Yeah, hashtag handstand challenge. I think, I think it actually uses the little hashtag okay. thing. We'll, we'll, put, we'll, put the, right. we'll put it in there. We'll get signed up, guys. We actually really need the help, and it'll be a great day out, so we'd love it if you come help yeah. us. So, and learning hand sounds cool, and we know that it's by far the most popular thing that we get questions yes. about and people get involved in and want to try. Uh, not the learn. most popular thing that we ask. Oh, I not, shall ask you the most popular yeah. question that we get to set this up. So yeah, this, the most this, popular calisthenics thing. This, yeah. So this <laughs> question we literally get on a daily basis, not once, multiple times. Are you ready? Across different platforms. Across different platforms. The most... Common question we get asked. asked. Yeah. Can Ready? I guess it? Do you, think might, I, do you think I'll guess it? No. You might miss it. You ready for the question, Dave? Uh, okay, question master, ask me the first question. Hi. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I do love those ones. So what, I, I sometimes look at it and go, what do you want me to do with that? I, I like it, it's friendly. Yeah. I really like the friendly outreach. I'm thing. impressed that, that that isn't a question I thought would get read out on the podcast or no. on the Q&A, but it's actually made it there. Neither did the 10 people that <laughs> asked it to know what, what were too their many, names? What too, were many, their too, names? Too, too many to mention. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's not. We, we appreciate that you reach out, and, uh, and we then have to ask a, a question back to them. find out what the question you? is. And sometimes we get a reply, and sometimes we don't. I often pre I sometimes preempt that. It's their first interaction and they don't really know what's going on. Mm. So I'll go, oh, have you got started with our free beginners guy? Because a lot of the time people want to get started with the free beginners yeah. guy. So I'm like trying to second guess them. But I mean, I, I, I like it more when they come back and then just write no. <laughs> 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 like, you know, I can't help you now. I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. I think I've had one where someone's gone, done that, gone, hi, and I've gone, hi, how can we help you? Go, no, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> the other one we've had recently is a couple of people emailing questions in going, how can I increase my height from training? Yeah, Strange there's quite question. a lot about height. There's yeah. been loads. And um, but we're not really equipped to, get to, to, to help with that. Did, we'd both be probably more than 5'10 yeah, if I we could improve height. Definitely no taller as a result of yeah. doing No, but I mean, if you knew the secret to get taller, would you make yourself... That's, oh, yeah. that's a good question. Would you make yourself taller? I'd like to be six foot. Would you? I don't know yeah. if I would, actually. In, yeah, I would. But I would, I would want the equivalent increase in muscle mass as well. <laughs> yeah, I want to be six, six, six 62 four. kilos in six <laughs> yeah. That'd be a sight to see, wouldn't it? If you, if you don't know the 62 kilo joke, That's go back to the last Q&A <laughs> that, we, that we recorded. Or go back to 15, 25 years or something. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, right, enough of that frivolity. Begin, question master. On uh, this playground session, I've got a plethora. Is that the right word? Is plethora. That? Plethora. Yep. Row? Can I have a row on the end of it? Plethora. Plethora. No. Plethora. Uh, questions from a number of different um, social platforms, not trying to keep it equal opportunity. So we've got Facebook and Instagram this week. Um, Oliver Kelly on Facebook. Real name. We think so. Did um, you start with a compliment? I feel like we've had a yes. couple of questions have had through, particularly the high ones. They're yeah. not starting with amazing what you're doing. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, but Oliver Kelly, I even, I even shortened it because it was that long i don't want to read it all out and bore people with it but i made a note that he actually put a really nice message about the growth in the school and what we're doing and being very supportive so oliver massive thank Much you for that and everyone else that is the same um but his question um and obviously gets the compliment gets his mm -hmm. question asked um and answered can you tell me if it's better to do handstand training on the floor or on bars um I seem to get on better with bars and my left shoulder feels a lot better as it doesn't like the, when my hands are straight on the floor. 
um, but he's happy with the bars. Um, thanks so much. Uh, and I've also got a question related to that is, and we, I don't think we can answer it yet today. Does, do all the handstands have to, for the world record have to be just on the floor? It's probably uh, a good question to yes. ask Guinness, isn't it? Mm. I assume it will be. But whether someone had like tiny little things, I don't know. They might yeah, be. Like, I, right? I, I feel know. like from what I understand at the moment that it needs to be straight arms and straight legs. I yeah. don't know that it necessarily then has to be the point of contact with the ground, whether that's, yeah. we'll find out. Yes, we'll that. speak to Guinness. I also want to, would like to know from Guinness how they're going to ratify Three yeah. plus 399 people doing a handstand. Well, 10,000. So we've, we've got a couple of questions to ask. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll add it to the list. Yeah. Everyone's got to do a selfie while they're doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, the difference between... Um, oh, his, his question that I think is just to touch on specifically is that word better. Like, he's asking which one is better to do handstands on the floor and on bars. And I think that word better is a key part to that question. You can begin if you like. If you okay. want to delve into that. Um, deep dive. I'll take, we'll take, let's take a deep dive into the, <laughs> that handstand where. Um, so I pick up on the term better because I don't necessarily. Well, if one gives you pain and the other one doesn't, it's probably better it's to do better. the one that, that doesn't give you pain. But they're not, it's not necessarily this one's better than that one. Mm. It's more about understanding what, that they're different and then why they're different and then you can start to rationale why that might be. So when your hand's flat on the floor, you've got more internal rotation happening than when you go into the hands on the parallel, as long as you go in hands uh, on the parallel bars um, in, in a neutral position, then it takes some load off the wrist uh, because that's now not extended anymore. So that's gonna just be straight down. It also gives you some relative external rotation at the shoulder. So it's probably, it might be related to that around your shoulder, It'll tell you something a little bit about your shoulder. It could be you've got an issue with the wrist and it's transferring up the, up the chain. But certainly when people have niggles around the wrist in that neutral position, it'll often be um, easier, less mm. painful, therefore better. Um, but one isn't necessarily, I wouldn't say one is just categorically just better than the other. They're different. The balance is very different. You control the balance on the bar more with your wrist than with the, on your hand is on the floor, it's much more with your fingertips and gripping like that. So the skill part of balancing is, 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 a, is a fair bit different in terms of what your hand is doing. Yeah. Um, that's my main sort yeah, yeah. of I haven't got a lot to add like. to that one, to be honest. I think you've, you've ticked it off. I think it's, <clears throat> it comes down to, to which one do you want? Definitely work pain-free. Um, yeah. my, my suggestion would be to go and get someone to have a look at the shoulder because yeah. just the fact that it's in that position and, and painful, um, is showing that there's a dysfunction and, and it mm. may manifest itself in your hand balancing practice with hand on the floor but I'd be sort of asking what's that doing and pull-ups and stuff and yeah. you know you've, you're only as strong as your weakest link so if you've got an issue there go and get it sorted out go and see a physio and get them to have a quick look over it and put some rehab in the program if you need it. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the variability of, of, of having some different skill sets of being able to do some stuff on the floor and on bars like sometimes i just spend a bit of time practicing on the parallel bars because it's just a different challenge yeah, yeah um but i like to go to I, I would say that if you if you're into hand balancing and you're enjoying it just being able to sort of apply that into different modalities is is cool got my hand up so would ask one i've got i've just thought of one thing that the just because of what you've been doing recently with your those deep handstand yeah. push-ups that the, if you wanted to do some strength work where you're going up and down in sort of pressing movements, whether it's a pike press up, whether mm -hmm. it's a, in that full handstand, you are limit, your range is limited by the floor. Whereas if you've got bars effectively elevating your hand, then you actually can go through deep. So yeah. from a strength point of view, I probably would say the bars for that is better, but mm. equally you could just put your hands on a, on a step or a box or whatever to keep Yeah, that's something I think with the, with, when you get into the pushing yeah. side of it from a strength perspective, having the hands in neutral is going to play a lot more onto upper portions of pec and anterior delt because you're doing more strict shoulder mm. flexion. Um, whereas when you're going to, in a prog pro position, we allow the elbows to flare slightly as we would do onto a bench press. Mm. So you take bench press, and it's not exactly the same because it's horizontal and vertical, but the idea being that anatomically we change the joint position a little bit and therefore changes the muscle recruitment. So my deep handstand push-up hands on the floor is much better than my parallel bar handstand push-up. Um, partly because I think I've done more on yeah, the floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it definitely feels like a different challenge. Um, so it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's different. No one is better than the other one. I like the floor because I can do it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like I so said, I think his, your key message to take away is go see a physio and yeah, sort that shoulder out before it turns into something that's actually 
stopping you all. And it might just at the yeah. moment stopping you from handstanding on the floor, but if you yeah. don't go too far, it could stop you from hands from training yeah. in general. Yeah. You've had your fair share of shoulder issues and it's um, particularly frustrating. It's not an easy one to get back from. I'd, trust me, I've had mine operated on twice. Um, not from calisthenics. Not from calisthenics, from rugby. And weightlifting. Yeah. Um, so, I hope that's helpful. That's, that is quite a common question, actually, as well. Like, the people ask get questions about using bars close hands. So, yeah. it was a nice one to tick yeah. off. So, thank you for that, uh, for that Oliver. Um, next up, we have Muscle Up Trude. Quick one. Legend. Yes. From Instagram. Absolutely. Her Smash real name is like Trude. Uh, I think she's in Sweden. Oh, my, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. Go on. What is her real name? Well, she's got three bits, uh, which I find interesting. And it's linguist. like, it's Trude, like Ving or something. V-I-G-E, I think. Could you, do you recognise her or I know not? No, she is. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like the last bit's like Stromer or something? Yeah, yeah. Something like that, isn't it? She's, yeah. Killing so she's really Stromer. Like she's Interestingly, like Muscle of Trude, that was her name before. And then she, she we helped her. A, a really kind message. Well, we helped her, we helped her learn the muscle up. So yes. she couldn't muscle up until she, which was cool. Yes. Um, so yes, and she's now become our first female flag. So she's like racking up the... Um, the graduations. graduations, yeah, and redefining impossible, following our, yeah, she's just following our guys out in, in Sweden. And she said she should be coming to the handstand world record. So if she'd come from Sweden, could be up there with the furthest distance travelled. Oh, there's a competition. I've got my eye on a couple of guys, oh, you've got not in the right, there, wrong yeah. way, in, in Australia. Ooh. I like it when someone asks me about the handstand world record, they go, um, yeah, can, uh, how do I, like, uh, I'm in so-and-so, like, mm. how do I get there? And I send, send them the emoji of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, anyway, so, um, hello, I have a question for your podcast. Of course, I'm a huge fan of your school. It's amazing how you connect people all around the world through your social network and your competence. Mm. I don't know sure the last, le that last word might. That's good. Yeah. We'll be with it didn't, track because we're competent. Okay. It's compliment. It didn't feel like a really, like, <laughs> Flary word, I don't know. I don't just I, just, I swapped it in my head to like, because you're amazing. Do you find that if someone says you're competent, you're a bit like, I want to be more than competent. Yeah, 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 competent is just like, you're all right. Mm. Like, you're competent. Well, when, when we took our UKSA exams, you either get, which is our strength and conditioning accreditation, you are either competent or not competent, yeah. which basically means not competent or not going to hurt somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still doesn't really mean that you know what you're doing. I think is that, that's how you kind of... Yeah, that's how it's, yeah, the yeah, kind, yeah. I, yeah. I think it was lost in translation. <laughs> she meant like, you guys are cool. Um, when you practice, so the question is about handstands, about um, practicing the frog to handstand. She's been doing some great work on that. Um, and she feels that she's got the strength but not the balance. So what should be her top priority? Which I thought was interesting. Yeah. To and she put content, she, she's trying to second guess. So I'm trying to second guess you, Tim, head of handstands. Mm. She said, continue to use the wall. And then she's put that emoji with like the little hands and an upside down smiley face. I don't know how you do that. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's the, 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 the thing about the frog stand to handstand is that you need both of those things at the same time. So strong enough to be able to push out is one thing, but can you apply that strength in an unstable environment when your knees are no longer um, on your, on your elbow, your elbows no longer resting on your, on your knees, and then push up in the right direction. So having that kinesthetic awareness of where your body is in space and where your feet are in relation, because what we see a lot of people doing is they're in the frog stand, they try and push out, and they end up pushing out at 45 degrees. They think they're going vertical, yeah, but yeah, yeah. a little bit around <laughs> that is actually, I think, the, the brain taking a preferential um, activation pattern of going, oh, if actually if I drop the feet down, that becomes more of a chest-based movement. I'm stronger at pushing horizontally, so I'm going to try and make it that, that position more achievable as opposed to keeping the hips high and pushing vertically up. So totally agree that um, if you feel like you've got the strength, is it a balanced perspective? It is, but it's a combination of those two things together. Um, one, one thing I will be starting to try and, and do maybe is still using the wall because that, that helps you to get that pattern of understanding of where your feet are whilst you're applying strength. Mm. Um, and can you then start to use the wall less whilst doing hands to wall handstand push-ups? Because I mean, yeah. if you've got the strength, I'm assuming that you, you can do a wall handstand push-up, which I would be my first port of call. Yeah. If you're going to press out, those, those should be feeling pretty comfortable. Yeah. And I would say that sometimes, and this happens to us all the time as well, we think it like it might still be that you're not strong enough. Mm. But that don't don't take that 
badly, but just it, that might be yeah. part, that could be part of it. And I'd, I'd potentially look at, yeah, um, going one thing to throw into the mix that I used quite well when I was struggling to, to get that frog to handstand, balancing at the top and then actually trying to then stay off the wall and then try to come down to that frog yeah, or try yeah. to come down to a tuck position, yeah, but without the using the wall, yeah, yeah. Using, without using the wall at all. So you, you're working loads of balance and that strength yeah. at the same time controlling through, because it is a bit of a funny movement as yeah, you come yeah. down. Um, you have to shift a bit of weight forward as you bring your bum down, otherwise you just l lose that balance point. Um, so that's definitely one to uh, one to try, one of the tools in the eccentric. Yeah, the other one that I've seen people doing, um, which I think is actually quite good, we haven't used it a huge amount in the guides, but getting a, um, a resistance band, looping it around a bar, and then having it around your hips, and actually allowing that bar, the, the band, to give you a little bit of support. So mm. you have it around while you're in the frog stand, and as you take your knees off to be able to press out, the band just gives you a little bit of support from a strength perspective but it also guides your hips towards where the bar is, so it starts to pull you more vertically. You've seen from the, the handstand series we did recently that we, we quite like that tuck handstand position if you can create it because it's a short lever length, you've got less variables you've got to manage and worry about. Yeah. So you haven't got as much neural information which your brain is then starting to try and understand and, it, and, um, and then process of these small adjustments that we need to make at different points in the chain, hands, shoulders, core, feet, whatever it might be. Um, so it feels like it's, it's not a particularly straightforward answer because you've almost just got to find out where your weak link is and wh where you're struggling. Um, but I think if you combine in some of those things of pushing and getting good at pushing while you're not relying on the mm. wall, but having the wall there if you need it. The only other one that came to mind was, and it is a difficult exercise, if you went headstand against the wall and then tried to press out from yeah, a headstand yeah, from yeah. a strength perspective, because if, what you're doing is starting in a stable position and then have you got the strength to drive your hips yeah. up and a head. dead position and a dead one. position yeah. which is hard yeah um, but if you can get some of that nailed down then you just it really if you can do that 100 percent strong enough all you then need to do is actually understand are you pushing and keeping your hips in the right position at the right time and when you press out you've then got to start to as, as you get into that straight position you've got to start to integrate all those little corrections so that your feet end up in the right place yeah. because your tendency might be to push up banana back and all of a sudden you're going to go straight over the top yeah so maybe yeah. some video feedback on that for you will be useful film yourself and then when you fail the rep is it feet coming down if it's feet coming down you're pushing too far out in a horizontal pattern if your feet are going over the top you're not keeping the core midsection tight enough to yeah. actually line yourself up yeah yeah definitely and i think like with the handstand stuff for that frog to handstand you need that, but like you said at the beginning, you need that balance, you need that strength. And it's something that like, I practice my balance still all the time. I practice yeah. the strength. I always do like handstand push-ups, pipe push-ups, mm. and just balance work. Like you're, you're always going to be working on those two things um, just constantly as you're trying to just improve, yeah, improve, yeah. improve, improve, improve. Yeah. Yeah. So but I hope that gave you plenty. It's probably good. You gave a more than enough ideas there to crack on. Yeah, yeah no, I was, be too many. I thought he was just going to go, just go, yeah, just try the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you really need to filter some of that out. But yeah, but it gives you something to play around with and to explore. And then, like Tim says, it's trying to find out what's the like key thing for you. What's the what's the most number, most number. I like the idea of I heard someone talking about like the domino effect. Yeah. There's lots of things you could do, but what's like the one main thing that would knock down the rest of the dominoes? Yeah, so, like trying to figure what out. When I learned to handstand. Um, I wasn't using a lot of the exercises that we, we use now. And I was coming from a point of a, of, a, of a fairly good strength training background, but we've definitely added more options for people. Yeah, um, totally. But I learned, I learned from just trying to press out. And I, was I started from a point where I was strong enough to go from, I could push myself up from a frog stand and get my hips up, what I couldn't do is balance. Yeah. So, so a lot of people have started from a point where they need to develop more shoulder strength yeah. to be able to do that. But I only use a handful of exercises and it's, um, it's picking those which are the right ones for where you're at which means you can move forward, don't bite off too much. Because I think there's so much around the handstand, there's a skill perspective of that actually constant rep, um, exposure to the same and correct stimulus is going to move you much further forward rather than trying to go, I'm going to do 10 different exercises. Just get really good at a few and then you'll start to siphon out the ones which are adding value and those which aren't and you should be moving forwards within that. So I hope that gives you plenty of ideas and help for your handstand training, whether it's Jude or whether it's any of you out there working on your handstands and wanting to come and help us break that world record at the hashtag handstand challenge, world record attempt. Um, you don't have to, just on that, you don't have to like press out from a frog stand. No. You just have to hold the handstand. Get you into can, it however you like. Yeah, get into it however you like. Um, but you're more than welcome to do it from the, from the yeah. frog stand. We, li we like that because you're, you're building pressing strength 
for a bent arm position that's going to help you to do like handstand push-ups mm -hmm. and other things as we go forward. Um, but you only need to you only need to literally get up and hold that handstand. So um, we've got the eight week uh, eight week eight lesson handstand beginners handstand guide if you are interested in in a week by week program that takes you all the way through from literally zero to being able to hold that handstand ready for the handstand world record. So yeah. check that out. Good. Any more questions, guys? Stick them in the comments yes. below or send them to us on whichever your preferred social media platform and. Um, if, if, they, if we try and bring the questions to Q&A, they're going to bring the most amount of value to the most amount of people, but we do try and get back to everybody who asks us. So if there's anything we can help with, stick the comments in. Yep. And I think until next time... Class dismissed.